There's a, a number of, of legends. Habu. Some of them concern mosquitoes. Some of them concern other things that we call pests today. But during the legendary transition of the control of the world from the animals to man, a great deal of changes took place. And it was during the mid part of this period that many of things that we see as mountains and formations were powerful animals and ogres and monsters. And this fly was probably the size of what we'd imagine a beef cow be today. It was able to uh, attack and kill people and drain them of their blood. And it was during this phase that a person we call Doquiba, which roughly transformed as the transformer or the changer thing, came preparing the world for human beings who were coming. And when he did this, he came across people like this fly and battled with them. But uh, he turned this deer fly into just a, a pest for the future humans that were coming because he was preparing the world for safety. However, like the mosquito though, mosquito was a monster woman who carried a basket uh, woven out of snakes on her, bas her back and she kidnapped children who were out after dark and children who broke taboos such as whistling and humming after dark outside. And there were a group of children as children will be playing out after dark. And there was one disabled boy in some stories uh, he's a hunchback and some he's a cripple who kept admonishing the children that it was time to return to the village, lest that Dashkea, the monster woman, so put in this language, would uh, capture them and throw them in her basket and take them to eat them. And they laughed and said, that's just a story that the old people tell to keep us into control. And they begin to laugh and whistle and hum. And before they knew it, uh, it was just like a shadow. She was on them, had them captured. And she had a little box of pitch. And she, if she was tossing them into her basket, she was rubbing pitch on their eyes so they couldn't see where they were going with this little disabled boy closed his eyes really tight so that the pitch didn't glue his eyelids together. And he was able to see a little bit where they were going. And as he was traveling through the forest, he saw this overhanging limb and he grabbed a hold of it and got out of the basket and then followed the witch woman to the camp where she began to build up her fire and prepare to cook the children. And she was so thrilled at the aspect of cooking this basket full of succulent children, she began to hum and sing and hop and skip around the fire. And the, the disabled boy snuck into the group of the other children whose eyes were still stuck together by the pitch and said, we must compliment her on her singing. And we must get her to sing louder for us, then we'll ask her if we can dance with her. We'll get her in the center, and we'll hold hands and we'll dance back and forth towards the fire until we're close enough that the pitch can melt your eyes. And they can open. At that point, I'll holler and we'll all shove 
to the witch into the fire. So they begin praising the witch woman about her wonderful song and everything and asked, asked if they could sing along with her because she had such a beautiful voice and played on her vanity. So she was flattered, of course, and let them out of the basket to sing with her. And they said, we're having such a wonderful time. We're so glad that you chose us to eat instead of the other kids. We'd like to dance with you also and celebrate. So she was so, we'd like you even to sing louder so we can hear your voice and we'll sing along with you. So they begin to sing and dance back and forth. They got closer to the fire and the pitch softened and they were able to open their eyelids apart. And although they pretended they were still stuck closed, they came in in this dance, closing in, and the little boy hollered, and they all joined hands, pulled together, and shoved her into the fire, where she began to melt like pitch, and she burnt, and she turned into thousands of little sparks, which turned into mosquitoes. And since then, mosquitoes are still thirsty for the blood of humans, but they aren't big enough to drain them and kill them like the monster woman was. <clears throat> but these stories are also therapy stories because in a, the witch woman represents our troubles in life and how they can grow out of control, how we need other people's help to nullify these troubles and how when our troubles are broken down into components they're not so life-threatening anymore. They become like the mosquitoes we can tolerate them. There's more aspects to the stories of these things like the flies and the mosquitoes than just the legend, they all were also counseling therapy story. The end. <laughs> <laughs>